Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Nexus Gaming Series. I am Jason, and today we've got for you a Division B West match between Roll Esports and the Wind Train here on the opening night of NGS. These naughty, naughty teams starting just a hair early before season start, but hey, we're all in the mood for NGS, so why not get things going? I got uh, tonight's uh, co-caster with me tonight, my teammate on uh, Regen Divine, Blank. Some of you might know him uh, is in by his in-game moniker of Zigo. How you doing tonight, man? I'm doing good. How are you doing tonight, Jay? I'm pretty good. It's uh, Sunday nights are special for me as it's the beginning of my weekend. We got a couple days off coming up here to prepare for our big game Wednesday night, but uh, plenty of time to sit back and watch NGS Open here in these first few days. Season ten, we've made it to the big X. Yeah, man. No, no better way, in my opinion, to get hyped up for your own game by watching other people duke it out. <laughs> That's right. Get a little idea of what's going on with uh, some of these higher-up teams, too. We've seen uh, a little bit of BOS competitions in some of our scrims, but uh, we have not seen either of these teams yet. But Roll1 Esports, of course, a longtime staple here in the Nexus Gaming Series. And uh, maybe it's just me, but this is my first time seeing or hearing of the wind train. And... Uh, I've seen I've seen Duck Rogers rolling around, but for the most part, um, for their for their roster, I am not familiar with these players, so it's kind of an X factor for me. Yeah, I, I I've, Duck Rogers I've definitely seen around. I think I've seen a couple of them, the other ones bouncing here and there, and no nothing too solid, but it's definitely gonna be really interesting. Uh, Wind Train is definitely a new team to me too. Yeah, that's always the that's always the most difficult part for the uh, placement committee. In my opinion, they do an amazing job season after season and have gotten better as they've gone along here in NGS. But new teams, new players, that can be a little bit of a struggle. So tonight we'll get a real a real good shot at seeing uh, a, a team that they know exactly where to place because of so much experience in Roll1 Esports and how the wind train matches up to these guys here in Week 1. Yeah, exactly. It would, it would really uh, put a testament up to show uh, how strong our uh, placement committee can be. Yeah, I mean, placement committee OP here at NGS in general. Mm. Uh, so many seasons have had really, really competitive uh, matchups, but uh, ultimately, only one way to find out. You gotta get into the games and do play them. <laughs> yeah, do it live, exactly. Uh, so we got, do yeah, we got game number one, gonna be on Towers of Doom. This was the map pick of the Wind Train. So uh, Roll One Esports gonna have first pick, first ban. Uh, Blake, what do you what do you like on this map in terms of strategy and any particular hero picks that you feel are really strong here? Well, personally, uh, as someone who mains planes in off lane, um, I definitely like the double soak idea, which can always be very strong. There's a lot of new champions and new heroes that come up all the time that are potentially able to do it. Um, so the double soak with a four man push bot is always really strong. But I always think, you know, people have to think about how to counter that. So I always like the, there's some teams that go for, I've seen lately, they go for a really strong mid fight early game and try and get a tower or two just to get that early experience lead. And I've seen it work really well lately. Yeah, the camp's a very important uh, factor on this map as well. The sappers in the bottom lane, especially being able to push that bottom bell tower down, you see a lot of priority on that bottom bell tower often offset by that double soak strategy you were talking about exactly you know i mean you know like uh i've seen a lot of times where a team will double soak you know the mid top but their four man will crumple bot or they don't have enough siege to really take advantage of them being a four man and they'll end up either losing their own tower or never gaining advantage over the enemy tower which is the whole point of the double soak is you take that tower you push camps constantly into the core and then you also have a superior advantage on rotating into objectives that you know spawn on the bot side all right so you got a really strong double soak strategy here what's the best counter or just general answer to it mm, definitely a good counter is um obviously you double soak you know counter double soak with the double soak um or you play a really heavy gank team you know you you play a team that can be a three or even two man bot to clear the wave and just protect structures and have your other two or three team members rotate on that double soaker and just gank them constantly gank 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 because if that double soaker is dead then 
that foreman has to break up, go catch waves. Maybe they miss a camp. They get behind on their timing. And, you know, once it starts, you know, at first it's just a couple seconds and a couple seconds. And those seconds really add up towards the end of the game. All right. So it looks like right now we have one member of Roll One Esports who is currently uh, not showed up yet. Uh, they haven't haven't quite been able to establish where he is. So right now we got a little bit of a delay going, but uh, we'll make sure to keep you guys posted as to what's going on in the uh, lobby here. But we do have all other, all the other nine players set up and ready to go. I don't know, Blake, maybe you can jump in there with him for a game. <laughs> yeah, man. Why not? Right. Like a glove. <laughs> like a glove. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, for me personally, this is one of my favorite times uh, of the season. Is the beginning when there's so much un unknown. Uh, this is the first time for me as a player uh, to go into a division where I don't really know hardly any of the other teams. Uh, Clouded Minds is probably the one I'm most familiar with down there in uh, D West where we got placed this season. Yeah. But uh, even Clouded Minds has a has a completely uh, revitalized roster. roster. Yeah, so I'm not really sure what's going on down there. It should be a lot of fun to play, but more importantly, to get to uh, compete against a bunch of people I've never really gotten to play against before, that's a lot of fun of it, too. Yeah, and I, I know um, just from you know keeping up and watching from last season, there's a, a, quite a few new teams in Div D West, so... You know, much like our own team, since we're, we're very new and we're very, you know, just new to being placed, there could be a lot of other teams like us that, you know, we're brand new and, you know, I mean, we don't know. Maybe Divine is supposed to be higher or lower. And same thing for other teams. I think it's going to be a, quite a fun season. It, all divisions all around. I mean, like this game alone, Roll One's been around for quite a long time, but Wind Train, I mean, they could come out, they could be a heroic, you know, playstyle team. Yeah, we don't know yet. So that's why, you know, like you said, this is the the best time of the season. You get to see all the new teams, all the new players, really see the new meta f take form and open your eyes to what can be possible. That's another thing we can definitely talk about. We've had the off season with a couple of different uh, uh, adjustments in terms of uh, the, the power balances and the meta. Uh, any, any particular changes you think we might see implemented here tonight uh, from when we were playing a few months ago in uh, the the grand finals for season nine? Any new emerging heroes that might uh, really make a splash? Other than, of course, the new hero in the game, May, who hasn't ever been played before in NGS before tonight. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, May is very strong right now, but there also is the big thing that May's uh, definitely more weighted uh, ultimate in comparative is banned currently avalanche isn't allowed in i mean ice wall can be very good if you know how to combo right but it's very clunky i feel like right now and it's easily dodgeable so i don't think we're going to see a lot of may play i do think we're going to see a lot of you know play on some of the people that have recently been getting buffs uh, like etc um and we're i've been seeing a lot of anubarex coming back out lately which is very shocking to me he's not in the greatest place right now but he can be you know, I'm fairly strong. I feel like really useful in a team play. Um, along the damage side, you know, there's obviously the obvious like Tacit or Cassia, stuff like that, that have been getting buffed and nerfed constantly in the past few patches. Um, you know, statistically showing either they have the highest ban to play rate um, overall. So I actually just looked up the bans. It looks to me as though they did remove uh, Avalanche from this list. So I think. I think Avalanche is uh, it's good to go. Oh, okay. Well, if Avalanche isn't banned anymore and the team does know that, then we might potentially see the the you know the May come out tonight because, I mean, she's her Avalanche is very strong as an overall all. I mean the. That's okay. The you can just call it broken. We can call things what they are. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, that's true. I mean, the more people you catch, the longer the stun. It's a very big hitbox very hard to dodge sometimes um especially if you, you know you're someone with a mobility move you know a mobility movement thing and you used it already or you don't have one overall you know like some champions like 
you know, like Jimmy, I mean, or Rainer, sorry. Um, you know, he can press W and get that movement speed, but he doesn't really have much to get away other than that. And if he doesn't have W up, he's going to get caught. Um, All right, ladies and gentlemen, looks like we got 25 people hanging out here. So thank you very much for joining us here for uh, one of these two season opening matches here tonight for NGS Season 10. Let's go on into game number one. Roll One Esports versus the Wind Train. Towers of Doom, we're gonna see Alarak band out at the start. Now I do know that, uh, I, I wanna say that uh, Roll One Esports does have an Alarak player, but uh, they also mm. do have a sub in uh, right now yeah. for that one player that didn't show up. So it could very well have been uh, possibly their Alarak player that wasn't around. Could be a contested hero between these two squads. Yeah, um, I mean, besides, you know, Wind Train might be new, but, you know, if a couple of the players have been bouncing around for a while, you you know, some scouting can be done. Roll One not giving any time to Wind Train tonight, in my opinion. I mean, these instant bans, Alarak gone, Deathring gone, you know, they're, they're not wasting any time on this clock. Yeah, they know exactly what they want to ban. They had a plan coming in here, and that's kind of what you would expect from an experienced NGS squad. Oh, yeah. I I would I would expect this to carry out through the whole draft, you know, instant locks on picks, instant bans. Uh, I I feel like there's gonna be a good execution tonight on uh, on play. No shock to see ETC thrown out, one of the preeminent tanks here in uh, Heroes of the Storm, especially here in the uh, in NGS, where he's a pretty he's a pretty easy tank to use. I always uh, I would always see. Uh, I never really see a tank player that doesn't have ETC on their roster. Mm, and especially since the changes on his level 13 Encore, uh, the 8% per hero hit on ultimate cooldown, I mean, Mosh Pit has, you know, before it was always like, a, oh, should we use it, should we not? Now it's kind of like a, oh, we caught one person, okay, all right, we'll have it back in a minute. You know, I mean, it's one of those ults now, it's, if you... You know, don't get the greatest. Oh, it's it's not the worst thing in the world. It, you know, you can recover. I mean, my buddy Mongoose would probably contest you on that fact. He has always thought a one-man mosh has value if it gets you a kill. But well, uh, it makes it even better now with that Encore. Yes, I, I'm not saying a little bit <laughs> more sure. than worthwhile, of course. But, you know. So <laughs> like two-man and... mosh is a little more. <laughs> so how about Rainer, Orphea, Lee Ming here? So DPS out the gate... And there's Phoenix as well, so finally Roll and Esports gonna break the DPS trend and get themselves Joe. Maybe trying to apply a little tank choke here off of the mid uh, ban phase now that ETC's been thrown out. Yeah, I can I can definitely see that coming. It's definitely very interesting. Usually you see uh, a tank, you know, on first pick you see a tank pick and then it rolls into like a damage healer, but or you know if you're not first pick then you usually see a tank and a damage prick first but the damage just sweeping right off the front is it's um it's interesting i think it's a different way to play because now you know what to pick for healers like you know where it comes to as cleanses or not in my opinion now that's real interesting uh the wind train kind of doing the old reverse choke hold with the healer ban but uh, a little bit of a flex from Roll One Esports. They're, they go ahead and ban out the Ana, almost like they're saying, it's fine, our healer can play whatever. Let's take this mm. one off the board too. We'll just keep limiting them. <laughs> the White Main Leoric, that's a very strong combo. As long as White Main can keep autoing, Leoric has a very, very tank ability you know, with his W. And I mean, as long as he hits that W on Joe and has White Main poking at him, heal, 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 heal. So Malfurion coming in, the mana battery that mm. Li Bing loves to play with, and uh, I'll let you talk about the other one. I mean, <laughs> the man himself, Rexar, the you know champion of a horde. <laughs> I love you know I love me and some Rexar. It's um, it's definitely very interesting. Rexar is Rexar can definitely I think match the Leoric early game when it comes to double soaking because I, I from what it looks like I, I believe they're gonna have the lyric double soak here but i can also i'm a little afraid of you know rexer falling a little behind just because lyric can easily you know eve a stun and then just you know rotate halfway through another wave 
Meanwhile, Blaze is going to be the pick here for Duck Rogers uh, as their main tank. So Blaze, uh, it can kind of fill that role, but uh, as we've learned a little bit in the offseason, maybe not the strongest main tank in the game, but I think mm. could pair pretty well with uh, the big... The big AOE damage you might get from Orphea to combo off of those big AOE stuns. Yeah. I mean, definitely one thing with Blaze main tank is that he's, an, in my opinion, an all or nothing tank. Either you go all in on a fight and you're going to go for a pick, or you're going to get a pick taken from you. I mean, just looking at the damage on their team, though, Orphea has a pretty short range. Rainer never gets any range increases. You know, Blaze White Man has to constantly keep auto attacking to get the heals off. So I I see Wind Train being is very divey, very aggressive team in this playstyle. But the thing is, Phoenix and Li Ming both have pseudo teleports to just you know get out of there. You know, they can do whatever they want. All right, well let's get on into game number one. Picking off the B West division here in NGS Season 10. On the left, we've got Row 1 Esports. We've got Alberto subbing in here on the Phoenix. We've got Velvet on the Johanna. Big Beard going to be playing Rexar. Ho going to be on the Li Ming. And Wanube going to be on the Malfurion. And uh, over here on the red side, we have Al Alpha Rack playing the Orphea. Duck Rogers on the Blaze. Concept with the K for Leoric. Uh, Mia for the white main and Dalzim, I don't know, Dalzim? Yeah, I'll say, say it's Dalzim. Uh, on the Rainer. <laughs> I, I definitely gave you the uh, tougher job with the wind oh, yeah, train, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> in comes the CC train onto Duck Rogers, but he's able I mean, to uh, waltz away perfect, here. Perfect example of what I was saying. Uh, Blaze is very all or in. Oh, we see the Joe for the interrupt. They know Blaze is very low here. Blo oh, Blaze just jet powered in. He's going to get rooted. A bold move, Cotton. Unfortunately, it didn't pay off for him. He dives on in. Kind of like the Alarak dive. Almost want to save that for disengage in some scenarios. But look at the counter kill. Alpha Rock being the alpha male coming in. Dominating. Taking out Phoenix. Got a big hitbox. Not very fast if you can manage to uh, work around that teleport either. Mm. And uh, like I was suspecting, you know, you know, Rexar can clear waves, but he he's definitely falling a little bit behind when it comes to this Leoric. I mean, you know, Leoric easily can rotate up, catch the next wave, rotate up, catch the next wave. When oh. Train does have an advantage, you know, being able to rotate their players here since the weird picks down bot side to catch that mid wave. You know. Yeah, we'll give the first blood credit over to Roll One Esports, but that quick answer gonna have things pretty even here as they head in towards these uh, level four talent tier. Mm. We both see, we see both teams take their camps practically at the exact same time. They both had it in their mind. Send your damage on there. Get you you know have your tanks prop up and ghost them. Both of these gonna be crashing down in the bot lane. Roll One Esports. Gonna push in, trying to clear this out, but uh, quite a lot of uh, dangerous poke from the wind train. Gonna force them back a bit. We do see the slow coming out onto Alberto. The charge on the other side from Duck Rogers. He's gonna have to back up, pop straight, and uh, gonna have to go probably hit the tap. I mean, one thing that wind train does have over uh, roll one here is that Jimmy in a, in the middle of a big wave is very dangerous. I mean, he pops W and that whole wave just becomes a little murder machine. Yeah, it can not only push the wave stronger, but if it does move over to the uh, minion wave, or to the heroes, can do a little extra damage there. Meanwhile, up top, uh, Rexar definitely get the, getting the better of this matchup as uh, Concept gonna have to go back and tap as we head in to the first altar phase the uh, first and fifth altar phases being these triple spawns. And we'll see how these teams want to prioritize this. Mm, we see the Rexar on it early. We see Lurk approaching really late. If Rexar is fast about this, he can get Misha over there and interrupt this. We can see it maybe. Oh, he gets the interrupt. Meanwhile, down bot, the 4v4 going strongly over the roll one esports. The, uh, the Ming resets coming in from that level four. It's going to give them good positioning. Up top, back and forth, these two go. Meanwhile, the wind train getting a little bit of healing in here from White Bane. They're going to be too late to get in 
to actually contest the tower, but they do manage to get some good damage and positioning. But again, Duck Rogers charging in and, and just going to avoid that uh, that orb and get away. But Phoenix, not so lucky here. That's a big kill for the side of the wind train, and they're going to get Rainer on the other side, but the resets come in. Two for one in favor of the wind train off the back of that. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I think in my opinion, wind train definitely got out with a lot of picks and got the level lead, but losing that 12 pretty early can be pretty dangerous. I think they might have been smarter for them to just rotate and try and take that Rexar down. I think they, you know, could have soaked waves. Got yeah, up, up top, Rexar screen. managing to get that cap as well. So the triple cap for World 1 Esports. Uh, how do you how do you like the sound of 40 to 28 here as you cross yeah. that five minute mark now don't get me wrong towers of doom is definitely a map where you can turn it around from one health and you know 40 oh another team but it takes a lot of precise execution late game to get that correct and you know i don't want to see you know uh wind train trying to pull off some weird late game cheesy full tower wipe or whatever <laughs> <laughs> Big damage coming in again from Royal One Esports as they get the pick out onto Orphea. So that's gonna that's gonna even the kill count at three to three, and the XP pretty much dead even here. So really, that uh, the big advantage being the uh, the core health right now. But we will see the single altar spawn down here in the bot lane. We'll have to see who maybe wants to prioritize and rotate this because Leoric's soaking up top now. He's not going to be able to be down here on time for this, but he might just show up a little bit after the spawn. No. But this New York Dessel doesn't really have the biggest team fight uh, build, in my opinion. He has a very good solo lane build. Does look like both the solo laners are coming down, but the aggression coming out from Roll One Esports. Big Beard looking at the back line. Duck Rogers in a little bit of trouble back here. His trait is down as he charges up top, trying to escape blinded low health meanwhile rainer just barely escapes the little bit of health left and again the cap from wannabe that's going to be a big pickup and the orb comes in taking out rainer now we have the resets are they going to be able to find another kill here as orphea trying to chop back trying to put something together the charge comes in and that's going to be three for nothing mia gonna have to run away here and uh, I don't think that's going to be quite... Oh, it is enough! Oh, yes, the, enough. The Damn big it. wave of force giving a little the extra damage from Poe. Four for wow. nothing. Roll 1 Esports are rolling here in this game number one. I mean, Alpharek put on a really good fight there. He was in their back line chomping and biting at him and trying to get that Phoenix down in mid-fight, but he just couldn't do it alone. Now Roll One Esports able to push down this uh, bottom lane front wall. This bell tower, such a high priority here on this map, gives you access to uh, this bottom altar area, but also uh, the sapper lane as well. Main sapper lane down here in bot. So uh, the double soap continuing about a level lead right now for Roll One Esports. Yeah, I mean, getting that front wall down bot lane is really huge too, because now your sappers have huge, huge value as they only go straight into bell tower at this point. Duck Rogers playing a really dangerous game, charging in a lot. He wants to wait until he completes quest at one and gets that unstoppable. You know, I mean, pre unstoppable, you know, their uh, Johanna can really just turn the fight around on him. Do have all 10 players down here. Full 5v5 as the uh, altar spawns here in mid. Big damage on the backside. Feast only gets one chomp, though, as they do back out. This is going to be positioning. Uh, good for the wind train, and uh, up top we do, have, we do have we do have Rex are trying to stall. Ooh, Duck Rogers. A yeah, big combo coming in from Lee Ming. Meanwhile, uh, Concept's gonna march on out, and uh, the cap does go over to the wind train. However, so they'll get their first shots and get up on the board here. Very interesting pick. I mean. I know Entomb wouldn't do much against the Ming Phoenix, but I mean, Alfurion or, I mean, even Rex are, you know, Entomb would have done so much. I mean, March is a very controversial ult, in uh, in my opinion, as a solo laner. It can be very good and very bad at the same time. 
Yeah, big combo. Blessed Shield coming out along oh, with the Sabo, but the Sabo doesn't get out in time. Look at the counter damage coming in. Big counter engage from the Wind Train as they get the double kill, and Wanabe going to be stuck out in the middle of nowhere. He's definitely going to fall. That's exactly what the Doctor ordered here for the Wind Train. Mm. Also, uh, on the subject of Entomb, would you say that uh, a lot of the reason that you take that against this comp is for what it's going to do for you late game at level 20? Yeah, I mean, level. I mean, that's this big thing is, I mean, you know, level 10 to level 19, it's going to be, eh, you have to hit on the right target, or if you do go for Ming or Phoenix, you have to make sure they have their teleports down. I mean, level 20 in Tomb, the silence, you catch anyone in that on their team, and, you know, they're gone. I mean, Ming has no health pool. Phoenix is just going to get blown up by, you know, Jimmy here. I mean, it's just an endless cycle that, you know, would keep going. So it's, it's definitely... Interesting in my opinion. My sweetness, I see you in that in that chat with that 69-bit donation. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. But uh altars activating here. Double altar spawn in the top. Both teams uh, on the level 13 talent tier, so no big advantage there. But it looks like both teams are gonna be content to trade out. And that seems like a big win here for Roll One Esports. I mean yeah, with Roll One is, Roll One with their lead in health on core right now is okay with just trading altar after altar i mean even they can give up one or two if they really need to, to potentially push a bell tower you know just because i mean they have such a health lead you know a bell tower would be so much more beneficial than a an altar to them right now yeah especially with a relatively even level uh playing field here in terms of xp maybe a slight lead for roll one esports as they rotate around here but ultimately uh didn't want to have to give that same talent tier fight if you're ahead on XP and on the on the shot counter. Yeah. Just wait for 16, then you force the issue. You'll see a little bit of poke coming as, again, uh, Duck Rogers comes in. They get some good poke on him, but he will pop trait and walk out. But uh, we got some time here before the next fight needs to be for. It should be all right. I mean, definitely have to wait now. Duck Rogers not having passive is a pretty big thing. I mean, that's his, that's his big engage, disengage right now. I and mean, now that he finally has that quest done, you know, he has to make sure he uses that unstoppable at the right moment. Big Beard kind of taking a look down bot here. Leo looking like he's going to rotate up to top, but uh, the cult the double soakers will go back to double soaking. And here is the fifth tower spawn. We'll have uh, yet another triple coming up here. Uh, Level 16 is going to be in for sure for Roll 1 Esports, but going to be pretty close here for the Wind Train. One thing Rexer does have since, you know, over over this, uh, over the Orc is Boar. Boar is a huge slow, and it can really mess up a team, whereas the Orc really can't gank that much. I mean, with Entomb, you can show up out of nowhere, Entomb, catch a team in a really bad position, but Boar's... Boars can always do that. Yeah, there's level, there's uh, level 16 in four row one esports. They try to force it, but are unable to really force much of an end gauge there. Meanwhile, Alter is going to be traded out. Big counter kills from the wind train. A big interrupt there on Twilight Dream, among uh, many other things happening down there in that team fight. Uh, peeling out just a second too soon, I believe. He probably could have gotten that channel if he had just waited. This is still a 3v5. All Poe has to do is really just stall them out. For 10 seconds, 10 seconds is all we have to stall. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, big, big push here. And uh, oh, Mia going to cap on the backside. But yeah, they do get the kill onto the Orphea. The reset's coming in with that orb build, but uh, we're not going to be able to capitalize on it just yet. Poe kind of low. Had to go down and tap. Yeah. I mean, if Poe hadn't lost so much health there, I mean, that reset could have really just turned in. It could have easily been a five man wipe into boss fight there. We just see the teams going, doing camp now. Duck Rogers kind of checking around. Yeah, level 16 in for both teams. Still an eight point lead right now for Roll One Esports. And uh, pretty much dead even right now on uh, on Soak from both of these now, squads. We're actually trying to grab camp here. The Orc should have noticed that the wait, you know, wave was pushing in and you know, no one caught the top wave. He should have realized Rexar wasn't there. He was grabbing that top camp. Top camp really won't do much here. Running the wall, a little low damage, but that structured experience does add up a little bit. Yeah, mid wave pushing in. I don't necessarily blame him for making a making a charge to mid, but probably wouldn't have taken too much time I mean, to I, take a I peek into that top area there. 
Exactly. I mean, with how long Rexor was missing, but the real, the realistic thing is, is the way Lee works building right now, he can't really fight Rexor on his own. I mean, it makes the sense. Are really good for double soaking. I mean, the minions heal and the extra damage at four, but. Out comes the bunker. Boar's on the other side coming in, along with that Sabo. Pretty nice damage combination there. But ultimately, it looks like they are going to back up into the choke, throw down the uh, the feast, oh. but Orphea falls anyway. Rexar Orphea keeps that chop up build just build for build. one more there with Misha. The altars have risen. But either that way, that's right. a big I pick here. All that, but Orphea went in with her feast, trying to catch them all, and she got silenced with Twilight Dream inside her own feast. Yeah. Rough. Meanwhile, uh, the wind train trying to see if they can salvage something here. They lose the bottom altar and are going to back up, bet thinking the better part of Valor here with uh, Orphea down. And that's going to be a double cap for Roll 1 Esports as they stretch that lead out to uh, 24 to 8. Um, like I said, even though they lost one there, Roll 1 is in a position to not care. As long as they get one altar. You know, every time there's multiple, as long as they get one of them, that's all they need. I mean, they have a big enough lead that they can slowly just play this game out. They have no need to force this game, to force any fights. Whereas Wind Train, they need to force fights here. And yeah. World War knows that. Yeah, pre-20, it's, it's really their only option to get back into this one before the... Uh, well, the next Alter phase is only going to be that bottom one, so... Can't really finish here if you're Roll 1 Esports, but you can't probably well, leverage one, that 20. Roll 1 can take Alter into boss if they have the level 20 lead. Good so point. They, you know, Wind Train does have to be a little careful. We do see the Feast combo coming out. Everyone does make it out. Never mind. A little bit of a, a, little bit of a misstep there from Roll 1. They didn't need to take that fight. Thought they saw the uh, the possibility of a big, a big uh, fight advantage, but uh, ultimately can end up losing two. That's a long, long death timer here at, uh, at 16 minutes in. We do see the levels uh, balance out a little bit. Yeah, it's going to get uh, the wind train to 20 right around the same time here. Roll 1 really just needs to play safe and protect that bottom altar. Honestly, give the give um, give um altar and protect bell tower. Sorry, I said the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, it looks like uh, right now the uh, bell tower... Not going to have much hope for staying up here. And that's a big capture for the side of the wind train. They get level 20, and now the altars are spawning with still uh, about five seconds for Roll 1's uh, two backliners, two of their backliners coming back in. So big swing in momentum here for the wind train. Let's see if they can keep this up. I mean, you know, I'm not going to wood, but I called it early game. Like I said, you know, they might have lost all three of their beginning, but now they're doing it. They're, they're doing that weird late game Let's turn it around and somehow get the 40 zero. Speaking of turning it around, in comes Rexar collapsing. There's a counter kills though. It's a bloodbath down here in the bot lane. Two for three. The wind train able to turn around after that initial kill on the blaze. Third is such a great start. Alpharek really turned it. I mean, Alpharek has been shining all game in my opinion. Really showing his Orpheus skills are quite top-notch here i mean he he single-handedly took out that rex in that fight he dodged a lot of abilities using his q at the right time definitely a, a personal game mvp in my opinion right now yeah velvet trying to set something up here for alberto but gotta look out concept coming in from the side on the flank they're not gonna be able to get this bell tower down just yet meanwhile we got three sappers coming in from the bot side here Let's see if uh the wind train can score these three shots. I think Alberto has to do is just play extremely safe and not get caught out here so he can clear that camp of Velvet tanking it. Trades a little bit of his but... shields here. Now they're in range. Velvet goes in with the Condemn, trying to get some damage out. They kill the first. Velvet getting a little bit low here. I don't think uh, yeah, Velvet's got the... going in and clearing it in. They played that really uh, well. There it is. Got it here. Oh, missing that stun. Retro does have Boar's, Boar's Roots at this point. This would be a killer moment. You see White Man waste the ult. And Jimmy's... Uh, yeah, Jimmy's Raiders down. Yeah, I think Doc Rogers may be trying to uh, 
zone here, but uh, nobody going back to cap just yet. There it is. Concept does cap, but there's the boars out to root. No real follow up there. Meanwhile, some of the members of Roll One Esports are just focused on this bottom bell tower. They do manage to convert it, and now the fight going to spawn out over this siege camp. It's already been capped, but uh, we do see the big Savo coming out and again. A huge feast. Pushing back the members of Roll One Esports, they lose the Joe early, and the Malfurion gonna follow into the Hall of Storms for about a minute here, as these death timers get longer and longer, and the Wind Train getting more and more momentum building up here. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, Big Beard kind of just left Misha to feed that Mosh, and I mean, if Misha just pulled out, Mosh would have ended, and they probably could have turned that fight in a different direction. But I mean, he kept that feast. I keep saying Mosh. Um, he kept that feast going and going and honestly really, you know, turned that fight. Leork finally getting value out of March, in my opinion. He, that was a killer March. He landed three, maybe four people with the end big heal, uh, level 20, that he gives a big heal because he gives drain um, on every target it hits and his range. And I mean, like I said, it's very controversial, in my opinion. It, it's good and bad. <laughs> It's only as good as how well you use it here, and uh, getting some getting some late game value out of it for sure. As they are winning these team fights in a big, big way, and now we've got the double altar cap. Doing a little math here, this still isn't enough for either squad to finish off the game, unless Roll One Esports can get this bottom bell tower back. Looks like they're going to try to force the fight, but in comes the uh, feast again on the backside, getting a couple of chomps. Down comes the uh, bunker. Gonna save a couple members from that Savo damage. Uh, does a decent job of chunking the wind train, but now they're gonna go in. Blessed Shield comes out. They stun a couple, but big damage back onto Velvet. Johanna's gonna go down, and just like that, the wind train gonna secure themselves that uh, advantage here going into the bell towers. Now, the big thing is, is, ooh, never mind. I was gonna say, wind train has to play smart and keep, be able to cap both altars. And protect this bottom bell tower, but big, you know, big beard getting picked off there just makes it really easy. I mean, it's a 3v5 now, and all I have to do is just hit a couple on tower. Yeah, not much Alberto can do up top there against the Orphea. We we knew the rest of the team was going to be rotating up. That's going to be yet another double cap for the wind train, as what was once a pretty sizable lead here for Roll One Esports now becomes a three point deficit as we head in towards the end of this one. I mean, I called it at the beginning of the game, and I said Wind Train is going to pull some weird late game turn it around. <laughs> <laughs> that does seem to be how Towers of the Doom goes most of the time, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it's it's like like eighty percent of the games is you you start you start off winning and you lose, and the other twenty percent is you you start off losing and you and you win. <laughs> this might be one of those only maps where uh, the first team to level ten doesn't always have such a big advantage. But uh, this is double sapper camps coming in. This could potentially finish the game depending on how many of these are able to get across the board. Let's shoot this come out. Yeah, here comes a big Savo from the backside. Huge damage coming in there from Alberto. Poe getting poked out low. Bunker not going to quite be able to save them, and it's an ace. How? How is it an ace? I don't know. You see Poe and Velvet slowly taking out that Bob Bell Tower as the rest of the team potentially could head, should head for... Oh, no, they don't even need head for boss. They just claim both altars here. This is game. Yeah. Yeah. Bell, take, bottom Bell Tower and both of these altars the win this. Velvet and Poe are taking too long to get that bottom Bell Tower. They have to get in the next 10. Oh, they're going to get it. They got it. They got plenty of time. Don't worry about it. And there it is. That's game. That Blake! one single fight. <laughs> Train, wind train was so close. Just when you think the wind back. train is out of the forest, it crashes and burns somewhere on those tracks. Wow. Apparently down in the bottom bell tower area. And that is going to be it, guys. Uh, Game number one going over to Roll One Esports. They pulled that one out of the fire. I want to see that last fight again. I mean, that, it was, it was all over, but the, the salvo was huge. I mean, that, that salvo just destroyed their entire backline. I mean, I know Mia and uh, uh, Alpha Rack dropped, I mean, all the way down to like 20% HP. And then, I mean, it was just, it was clean up from there.
All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, game number one. Let's go over to Roll One Esports. Let's put their point up on the board. This is a best of three series here, as are all the regular season matches here in Nexus Gaming Series, at least in the regular season. See some uh, big best of fives uh, at the end of the playoffs, but uh, for now, we're going to get set up and ready for game number two. But before we do, any last thoughts you have on this one, Zigo? Um... I mean, definitely well played on both teams. Uh, Wind Train definitely was struggling in the beginning and came back extremely well. They were playing the game very well. I, I'm, I'm going to say I don't think they need to push those sappers in. I think they need to wait for the next objective. Sappers weren't going to get them the win. They, you know, it was five health and three sappers. And if I can do math, it doesn't really work out. I think they had six sappers. No, the second camp was, No, they only had one. All right. Um, you know, I, I mean, even even so, you're probably even if you did have six, you're probably not going to push them all in. Yeah, even if they have, even if they had both between the you know the Phoenix and the Ming, you're you're not going to get all them in there. I I think they should have just backed up, you know, how even give up Bell Tower and just secure at least one altar on the next fight. Because, you know, the, the the 30 second timer might have popped up, but you can see on the map, you could have seen both of those altars, you know, you could see it was a two altar spawn. They could have just been like, all right, let's play it safe, give Bell Tower, or even fight Bell Tower until uh, altars come up, then go grab one altar, and then maybe fight for second altar, or maybe fight for boss. But I think fighting right there, that close to the enemy's... You know, the cannon zone is, is always, always a bad idea, and I feel like, in my opinion, because, you know, blue team easily could back off there at low HP and just, boom, they're safe. Or red, I mean, they can run, but they can only run so far, obviously, because then boars catch up to them. <laughs> All right, well, let's get us set up for game number two. And uh, we're going to go into a quick break while we do that. And uh, we'll see you guys at the beginning of the draft here for game number two in this B-West division match.
All right, we are back here for game number two. We got Roll One Esports with first pick, first ban. Wind Train electing to pick Infernal Shrines here. And uh, again, you know, big, uh, big rotation heavy map. Another one where uh, also could be a viable strategy here. Maybe not as common on Infernal Shrines, but uh, key here, wave clear. Mm, that's definitely what I was going to say too. I mean, the big thing, big thing about this map is wave clear for objectives. I mean, wave clear, period. I mean, this map has, you know, a double camp mid, single camp bottom, and both shamans top. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a very camp heavy map, very objective heavy map, and controlling your siege and waves is very big here. And once again, we see these uh, similar bands. Uh, from game number one, Alarak being thrown out here by Roll One Esports, and on the other side we see Chromie tossed off the board. Mm. I believe Chromie was their second ban last time for a uh, wind train, but that's when banned out. If once I know again. anything about bans like this in this division, they're complete respect bans. You know, someone on the other team probably potentially plays a decent, you know, whatever here that is, and. You respect that they play that, and you want to keep it as they play it that way. <laughs> and there's the ETC once again. So identical to the first, uh, the first set of bands. And you know, I'll tell you what, I don't, I, I don't really expect either of these teams to change too much. You know, the Wind Train, they lost game number one, but is really off the heels of that last team fight. Either team yeah. could have won it, and so I, I don't see a world where the Wind Train really needs to change a whole bunch of things up here. Yeah, I mean, obviously you can already see from the draft. I think things are going to change a little bit just because I different don't think map. the... Yeah. yeah, it's a different map is the big thing. But I think, like you said, overall, we're going to see a lot of the similar things here out of both teams. I think both teams played very, very well. It came down to one distinct fight. And, you know, the, the winning team of that fight won the game. It's and just how we're going to be. And we've got at least one or two more games to to really uh, to really see on this point, uh, blank. But certainly these teams look pretty evenly matched in game number one. Meanwhile, Johanna and Greymane going to come out here as the follow-up picks to pair with Tassadar. So Tass going to give them a lot of AOE Shrine Clear, the Wave Clear, a really big deal there. Johanna also able to help group these up. And kind of hold the line on that point but uh, Sonia one of the real staples here on Infernal Shrines is she provides uh, absolutely amazing wave clear but also gets a lot of extra sustainability while she's fighting on those points mm -hmm. yes we do uh, see, see white main about that respect band that white main you know they, they were like <laughs> that white moon was keeping them up too much <laughs> yeah they were worried about the Ana. So maybe we might now be able to see that, but uh, instead they're going to pivot to the Rhaegar. Big question being, is this going to be a Bloodlust Rhaegar, or is this going to be an Ancestral Healing Rhaegar? Well, so far they have the Sonya, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see another, you know, big auto attacker come out, and we, we see a, a Bloodlust. Obviously that's a tank pick again, so we won't really know yet. Um... One big thing I see here is the Tassadar was picked really early. I I can, you know, the, the Orphea pick was also just because Orphea was good, but Orphea is really good counter the Tassadar. Tassadar self-roots, uh, mm -hmm. he, he self-roots a lot in most of his abilities, and, and I can see Orphea taking advantage of that between, I mean, just landing a Q, landing an E, I mean, etc., etc. Yeah, so Stukov gonna be the pickup here for the roll one esports for the support position uh, good ability to put those lurking arms in the cutoff points and chokes on this map meanwhile rainer coming out so that big aa damage does tend to lean maybe a little bit towards uh a bloodlust comp and there's not really much uh, other than joe there's not really much in the way to uh slow down that bloodlust yeah. earthquake well, earthquake's... i guess i mean earthquakes a big counter to bloodlust because you can just pop it at the same time and just turn Flint and run and swipe all right never or mind i take it back roll when esports has got a decent counter or, for bloodlust or you just put up a tash black hole right position. <laughs> or black hole i mean yeah you can um i mean just look at this draft here 
in, you know, we see a very similar draft, but I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm very, very afraid for this Blaze even more now. I mean, Ming, with you know, it was, a really, it was uh, Ming Phoenix, and so the Blaze was really strong, but, I mean, Tassadar, Greymane, I mean, Greymane's known for shredding people with decent health pools. Blaze doesn't have a lot of, you know, mitigation towards that. They didn't really pick a healer that gives a lot of armor or damage reduction. And if Blaze goes all in and doesn't hit Stukov, I can see Stukov just turning around and silencing him, you know, you know, deep in on the fight. All right, well, let's get on into game number two. Once again, on the left, roll one esports. We've got Velvet playing the Johanna, Big Beard, throwing out the taunt on the Tassadar. Juaniba going to be playing the Stukov, Poe on the Greymane, and we're going to see Zad in uh, for the for that uh, sub spot last time on the Thrall. Yeah, and over here on the right, we have Wind Train. We see Duck Rogers on the Blaze again. We see uh, Mia on the Regar, Alpharek on the Orphe again, Dom is on the Rainer again, and Concept on Sonya this time. Definitely a both teams drafted very well here, in my opinion. Just like last game. Definitely going to come down to who can play what right. I like someone throwing down the Alarak taunt. Or is the spray. <laughs> Carbot sprays are always the right choice, but when it's also taunting the uh, the, the band. Again, Duck Rogers uh, with the aggressive charge. But uh, we'll be I mean, able to make it out pretty unscathed this time he's around. In, he's charging in because he wants to get that globe. But honestly, if you really want that globe, that bud, I think you just, you know, I think Wind Train just doesn't clear the wave as hard. I think they're they're forcing these wave clears when they don't need to be. And there's that, that, see that, that wall silence combo I'm talking about. Duck Rogers is, I, I'm worried about him. He definitely has to keep an eye open for getting caught by the combo. I'm he still, kind of double click with Sonya here. I'm still a little salty that they gave him wall baseline. It feels it feels overpowered to me, but I don't know if it's going to help him here as Big Bear gets caught out. And that's going to be first blood going over very quickly to the wind train. Now I wonder if this is going to be anything like last game and there'll be a quick turnaround on, yeah. uh, <laughs> on the next <laughs> Instant kill. counter kill, yeah. But that kill like does give uh, the wind train the advantage. Part. They get down and get this uh, get this camp picked up pretty quickly. Mid captured a little faster for roll one esports, but uh, should give a slight XP lead here. All See, things playing, even. Playing really smart here, doing nothing with that bot camp, realizing it's not going to go anywhere with the gray man on the team, and just immediately going for their own camp, then clearing mid for you know uh, roll one's team um, camp does too much damage there. The floor is coming in for both of these squads. I mean, Sonya being here, you know, this is a potential 5v4 if they really wanted it. Thrall definitely cannot keep up with a wave clear of a Sonya, where Sonya can just, you know, walk in, war wind, boom, done. All right, time to leave. <laughs> a couple XP and globes going to be left down here in the bot lane. Big cutoff, actually, from the wind train. They decide they don't want to let them get down there to get any of those XP globes. I mean, seeing that they're behind an experience, you know, oh no, Wind Train's ahead. Um, they want to, you know, try to keep it that way. Yeah. Keep that advantage going in towards uh, this objective. Level 7 could be picked up if there's oh. a little bit of uh, side soaking going on uh, during beautiful, these objectives. Beautiful ulti for Sonya here. I mean, it's going to spawn right next to her. She doesn't even have to rotate down a wave. She can just keep her soaks going and just pop right in. We're all completing Echo at the moment really early. Very good sign that Thrall knows what he's doing. Be able to pull that off in under three minutes. Dank attempt coming in at to uh, Concept, but not quite going to find the mark. Meanwhile, uh, pretty even on XP for these squads. A little bit of uh, available XP in top here. Charge in from Duck Rogers. Can't quite find the kill on Zad, but meanwhile, Rainer going down on the backside as uh, Big Beard able to get the kill. And now both these teams are going to be poking up here and top around these Shaman camps. Both teams equally coming in towards that level 7. Roll 1 definitely getting the advantage clearing up this wave here, but potentially Wind Train can actually turn around. That wave's pretty big. They can probably hit that 7 and then immediately turn to taking that fight. Yeah, Rainer's short death time. Rainer's right right back, yep. Rainer's coming up right on the fort. Concept easily is on their backline already. And he's sitting on the damage. 
There's level seven. Three man stun in here from Duck Rogers. But uh we see walls down. Nice counter there. Alpharek doing what he did last game and just stepping up and really showing that he knows how to play Orphea. I mean you can see the potency of concept playing the Sony here. They are already caught up on objective minions. You know, nineteen to twenty that fast. Yeah, they take a slight lead here, as we do see Roll1 trying to push in the Tassadar wall, walling off a few big Condemn coming in here, as we are going to see the kill coming down onto Rainer. Concept in deep, trying to get Big Beard, not quite going to find the kill. On the backside, Duck Rogers getting very low, Mia getting very low, but they turn around onto Con Velvet, get the Con kill. Concept did a really good thing there, though. He peeled off Roll1 off his team. I mean, Duck Rogers and Mia both had no HP in... All of roll one rotated off to try and get that you know concept off their Tassadar. Honestly, I think it would have been best if they just let Tassadar die and they just, you know, got the double kill. I mean it would have been a two for one, it would have been so much beneficial, but you know, now they're sitting here you know, trying to protect a protector that they, I think they could have, or a punisher that they probably could have won, if not won, they could have at least gotten a couple kills, so it wouldn't have been so bad on the damage side. And it's such a big ask for players though in general. So it's so mm, counterintuitive <laughs> being willing to sacrifice yourself for kills. But you wanna help you wanna help your teammates so bad. Yeah. But up here I mean, on top, look at this, the fourth this is gonna a big, go down. This is a big staple that I will always say uh, first objective should never ever get a forward if played right. And I mean that one right right there, it might have been a little slow and kind of on the edge, but it did get that forward. Yeah, so uh, the wind train gonna have constant extra trickle xp from that top four also gonna have the occasional and right now uh oh look out big beard getting taken out here gotta watch out for those uh gotta, gotta check the bushes Ooh, Alfred, stepping was just a little too close in that green in sorry i've cut you off there but ah the counter kill comes in and they got that occasional catapult First one sitting up in top lane right really now. You can see the experience lead. It's slowly just adding up. They just got that 10 a little sooner. I mean, you know, it's slowly just going to keep adding up. You know, they're going to keep getting these camps now knowing that they have the advantage. Let's see what we see here. We see Wrath of Berserker, Eternal Feast, Ancestral. So it is not the bloodlust we thought it was going to be. Now comes Raider. that Raider once again. So no. Blaze is being really smart. Blaze is holding. So he, so he did go combustion. I, I thought I, I, I thought I, you would see the uh, bunker to counter the black hole, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> yeah, bullet coming out as well. Blessed shield, flailing swipe, and uh, the sundering. So maybe sundering a. Uh, uh... I mean, I definitely think the sundering pick is because there is no, no bloodlust blood yeah. counter in. Honestly, Earthquake can be really strong, but Sundering I feel like can be really a lot better, especially against like a Orphe or a Jimmy, because you can put them out of position mm -hmm. by simply just pressing a button and boom, they're stunned way out of position. And while uh, Poe coming up in mid, trying to poke out a little bit to the Sonya, but able to rotate away. Velvet got to watch out here. The slow coming in to the stun and Velvet goes down. They I mean, pick up here, and now will they be able to rotate in time maybe to get the uh, camp invade? Nope, that's a little too late. They actually I mean, don't even try to go for playing, it. Playing just off their names, they're, they're, they know they have the lead. They saw the thrall top. They saw that Stukov was missing, and Velvet was just, you know, that slight bit out of position. They took advantage of it. They're they're rolling with their wins. Roll one, uh, rolling down to the bot lane to get a little bit of this XP, trying to catch up here. Slight lead still for the wind train in terms of the xp soak around the map here they're also going to push in this top lane and uh this is a big deal this uh this shaman camp is no joke up here in this top lane it will take down the uh the keep front wall if it's left unattended but right now roll one esports they're gonna focus on prioritizing the positioning uh, here if there was a catapult with that uh with that shaman camp i could potentially see a whole keep just going down if unwatched for long enough but we do see his concept getting caught out in that combo. We do see the feast combo. Into Look out! The black hole gonna just barely get them out of there after they oh. get the Sonya kill. The swipe into the black hole was just enough to get him out of that feast um, combustion combo. 
if either of those have been plus to press a second later, they could have been three or four people dead on the roll one right now. Yeah. The Wombo combo is the word that comes to mind here. But meanwhile, up top, mm. we do have that camp really starting to push in and get some value on that wall. Meanwhile, uh, big lead for Roll One Esports on the uh, on the minion count here for this arcane punisher. Do some coming in though, and if Roll One doesn't, you know, end this soon enough, Alpha Rat getting very low, oh, going down. But Sonya does come in, potentially looking for the counter picks, zoning off Poe. Thrall does go down. The ancestral so close, try and save the thrall, but it's not quite in, or the, I should say the the. Orphea, but not quite in time. I get so used to those two being on the same team, but here comes the big combo damage in. This time, Ancestral will hit uh, as Concept's going to have to spin out, but it is indeed uh, Arcane Roger, Punisher. Oh, gets to the jump right outside the wall, sadly. I think they're just going to have to give this fort in full here. We do see Zad have back to try and stop. I mean, Shaman, like I said, one catapult showed up. Threatening that keep heavily, heavily. That keep could have gone down if he hadn't back there. Yep. Oh, I guess he didn't really back. He died. But well, he's back either way. He's clearing that out. You know, because it's uh, it needs to be cleared up. Meanwhile, uh, we do have a decent amount of poke here for this arcane punisher. I mean, they're playing really smart, pulling that punisher as far as they did, all the way to the keep, baiting it over the wall. Classic counter. To this map objective, but still. Yeah, I know the reason why Velvet got so low there is because Velvet ended up tanking that bot for for a really long time. She had to walk all the way out in the lane just to get out of range. She's just standing right next to it, just taking all that damage. And we could see a potential 5v5 coming for this camp here, but Poe is clearing it pretty fast, so I don't think it's gonna happen. Potential invade opportunity, but it looks like roll one gonna. Be content to go to their own. We'll have to see if maybe the wind train wants to take a look. They will. The invade might come. The project getting suspicious. They're checking out the bush. The project getting dangerously low. We see the beast and the combustion combo. The beast is still going. The project somehow lived it. Now Zad gonna be the one to fall in this fight. They they had it set up. They had the. I I feel like. I feel like uh, Thrall maybe just a little bit late on a potential choke point there for that, uh, for that I think, uh, Sundering. I think once he saw Duck Rogers, I think he should have just immediately gone for the Sunder. Yeah. And the team could have turned on that. Yeah, I mean, with the gray main, especially with Bullet, I, I think you take advantage of uh, a tank, especially standing alone. I mean, you just, you see them alone. He sunder. doesn't have Bunker either. Exactly. I mean, there's no mitigation for that damage. And then again, they did almost turn it on Duck Rogers. I think Graymane peeled out just a little too soon there. Potentially missing just like one or two autos. I think he easily could have weaved in and taken out Duck Rogers there. He was, I mean, easily under you know, 200 health. Well, now kill count six to six. Both teams at level 15 heading in towards the 16 talent tier. His next shrine gonna be in mid, so slight advantage for the wind train they have their well in the mid lane so we'll have that tap available but otherwise it should be a pretty even opportunity here for these teams to get another 5v5 fight in we will see roll one esports prioritizing taking out the shaman camp in the top lane but it puts them in a bit of a precarious spot here duck rogers finds the stun on the oh. velvet about to see if they want to take this fight in the top it's a long way to safety here for roll one if they need to back up Concept looking for the potential flank. We can bounce around. We'll find the roots, but uh, unstoppable popped here by Duck Rogers. Oh, oh down bot. Beard. They find Rook Big Beard down. caught out. Oh, with a potential turnaround. Ancestral Big Ancestral out. comes in this time. Self Ancestral. Good thing Rhaegar got that back. <laughs> And Sunder was kind of iffy, in my opinion. I mean, put Thrall in a really bad position. Showed him in the back line there. It's going to be a double kill and possibly a triple here as they focus down Velvet. He's going to fall. And that suddenly becomes a three for nothing as uh, the Wind Train, as you said before, living up to their name. They get the momentum and they don't like to relinquish it here. It's going to take some kind of, uh, of, of big turnaround team fight. Possibly like we saw in that first game here for Roll One Esports. Yeah. 
Now, I was about to say something about that big wave bottom, but as we see, Concept are already noticing and rotating down for that wave can even pose a threat on this, this keep here. Gonna be the Mortar Punisher, the big Siegers coming in here to the mid lane. Mm. I think, I, I mean, World 1 has a really, really strong combo here. I just think they're not they're not exactly executing really well. Thrall's coming in at really bad angles a lot of time. Big Beard is taking a lot of, you know, he's stepping up just a little too much, in my opinion, just a little too often. He's but not no. just really getting the unstoppable on the <laughs> leaf. Is able to get okay. that uh, pulled over. They've got it down to about half health here as the front wall goes down. You do see Poe trying to zone there a little bit with that uh, bullet. Once again, uh, the stun comes out, no real follow up to it, and I think for now, Wind Train gonna be satisfied with getting about half the health off of this keep and are gonna instantly rotate to steal. I mean, they're gonna take half of that keep, and I think they're just immediately gonna take every camp. They're just gonna, you know, hit the whole view in a triangle of camps here. I'm gonna try to talk to Garrosh here about painting this map red. <laughs> I think Roll One should take advantage of seeing maybe that bot camp getting captured and should have rotated. Yeah, right now if you're Roll One Esports, you've only got a small window here before the level 20s come in for the wind train. So uh, you want to try to find a way to force a fight. These camp captures one of the opportunities, but here comes the wind train as they push into bot lane, uh, giving them that same kind of angle and opportunity here as it's a long way back to either the mid fort or the mid keep so we could potentially see zad coming in here for the flank with the sunder the root on the top side on the concept can they find anything here sunder comes out we will see the ancestral bringing concept back up but look out the black hole is huge zad gonna end up going down though not quite enough damage oh, okay. radar falls there's blaze on the backside. big beard gets collapsed on though is that Poe getting real low? Oh, back and forth. Oh, oh. Poe didn't die. Concept didn't oh, but Poe's in the wave. Oh, but he lives. Oh, oh but he lives. Ten health. Ten health. <laughs> this, uh, this thing's everywhere, man. I, I don't know where to follow it right now. Yeah, uh, that, was, that was the strangest fight I've ever seen. Brainway <laughs> making it with 10 health. Everyone else just dying here and there, and who knows how. But it's a two for four in favor of the wind train. They're going to roll right into mid. They're going to take out this mid keep, and I think they might be looking at the core here. They're going to look at it a little side eye. They do have Poe back here, but he's at half health. I don't know if he's got what got uh, the tools in his kit to be able to fend this off. Zad coming in. That timer is uh, still that a little ways away for some of the others. Thunder here soon. Thanks. I think. Yeah, they protect the core here, but not for long. I think Zad needs to not overchase this. I think he just needs to let it go, let them leave. They get 30% off of the core. They get that mid keep. Worth noting that the next uh, objective is in bot lane, so it is an advantage for Roll One Esports. They have a pretty healthy bottom fort area, including their well. But level 20 still uh, still a little ways away here. So that lumen that lumen level gap. Yeah, level I, I don't think Roll One's got enough time to get level 20. It might have to take the fight even down that level 20 here. Just looking at level 20s here, I mean, pretty standard. I'm not 100% on, on Rhaegar, the upgrade on uh, Ancestral. Meanwhile, I mean, look definitely... out here. Zad looking for the flank. Velvet also kind of on the side. It's a bit of a weird angle, That's but Roman Esports back. might have it. Can they make something of it here? They've got this got this strange angle, but uh, eventually somebody's got to pull the trigger here if they're going to go in on this. I was taking a ton of poke damage, trying to hold this wave off. They definitely have to do something soon. Here comes Zad. Trying to do anything. Ooh, Charge the charges comes down. in. There's no cleanse anymore. Cleanse is out. There's a Sunder, but Sunder doesn't really hit anyone. You know, I've really got, I've really got to tip my cap here to roll one esports. I like what they're trying to do here, but they just didn't... Fine. Here the game one. Um, you know. Find what they were looking for there with that flank. Keeps yeah, gonna go compared, down. Compared to game one, these fights are definitely going a lot more in favor of wind train over and over. 
compared to as before, they were, they were very back and forth, you know, teams were very equal. So there's level 20, coming in for roll one esports. 20 seconds on the Joe. An Orphea disconnects. So we will see the pause coming out. Oh, maybe this is why they weren't rushing core. Gonna head on back over to the camera scene. I call it the camera scene, even though we, we don't have our cameras turned on tonight. I apologize for denying you our lovely faces this evening, but uh, I had kind of a short window to get home from work and get this all set up. So I knew I would definitely not have time to set up cameras. But uh, yeah, interesting predicament we find ourselves in here is uh, Row 1 Esports staying in the game, getting level 20. His bottom objective's up, and, uh, well, I don't, I don't want to talk about it too much before we get back yeah. into the game, but we'll point out uh, a couple other things we notice. So I do want to go to the uh, chat a little bit just to kind of answer questions. So MFCO, I said, why fight down 20? So honestly, fighting down 20 there would have been really good for roll, roll 1, even if they could have gotten, like, one or two picks there, because with the way Zad was coming up on their flank, I mean, if Zad caught... You know, at least three people in his sunder he you know they easily could have taken that fight turned it around gotten one or two picks and even if they get one or two picks and trade one or two picks they get 20s and you know wind train can't take they can't end the game there if, as long as you get sonia or rainer wind train can't end game they don't have enough siege damage or if he's just too slow and you know, the rest of the team just doesn't have the siege to really forced into that. Meanwhile, Roll 1 is kind of living and dying by the Wombo combo in this matchup, so you don't really have to be on the same talent tier to uh, go for a Wombo combo. Yeah, I mean, real, real quick, it helps, quick, we but... We a bot lane. Roll 1 just got a keep pick because of catapult pressure. Yeah. That's what I didn't want to mention during pause. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, oh, look out up top. Big Beard gonna oh, fall here. Boy. Oh, no. Tassadar oh. goes down as well, but we do see on the backside they got Rhaegar. Go they got Rhaegar. Potential turnaround. Oh, no. Out comes the Frozen out. Punisher. Ooh, they get the damage get down with Orphea. Oh, no. <laughs> not quite enough. Wannabe going to be alone. And he's not going to be able to take on John Cena and the entirety of the wind train. That's just too no. much. That's... I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be that guy. I'm gonna say it's GG here. I do believe it is GG as well. I think. I, I don't think anyone will blame you for calling this GG. See the epic stuke of comeback, baby. <laughs> swipe, swipe, baby. Swipe. I'm not counting. Well, yeah, I, I'm kind of counting him out at this point. I do. I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm rooting for him, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Game number two goes over to the wind train here on Infernal Shrines. And that is going to take us to a game number three here in the series. No miraculous team fight turnaround this time for Roll One Esports. But uh, game three hype. Game three hype. <laughs> And my stats are zero. Boy, I, I really, really don't like that. That uh, yeah, that, that bug. Is that cool. bug. Blizzard, please fix. It it does tell me it was a twenty minute and forty two second game though, so that's what I'm gonna choose to focus on. Not the fact that I don't have anything else. But uh, uh, final thoughts for this mat for this uh, game number two. Um, I think uh, roll one had a really nice draft. I think both teams drafted really well. I think roll one had more of like a pick comp you know where they're supposed to pick off that one person and really blow them up um Rego definitely is a really good counter that but i just i just don't think they ever executed well i don't think they ever i think they thought about it a lot that you know they we saw thrall always on that flank he was really well positioned i mean he was doing amazing but then something was called in comms in my you know obviously i don't know but and all of a sudden he would just leave or he would start and then leave um, so I think the execution was a little here there, but I think overall both teams did really well But I think wind train definitely they caught that motivation early and they were like, let's do this and they just you know 
they they were trained they just kept chugging through it they're you know get our camps get a pick get our camps get a pick boom 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 i want to give a big shout out to the crushinator boasting over uh, 31 viewers uh, I, I imagine from that heroic game i actually uh was not able to look into the results so feel free to let me know in chat how that went crushinator i see you uh down in there but uh we are gonna set up for this game number three and we will be back as soon as that we head into that draft we'll see you guys in just a moment All right, ladies and gentlemen, take a seat, sit back and relax, watch the uh, end of opening night here as we go into game number three, Division B West, Roll One Esports getting the game one win on Towers of Doom, the wind train coming back on Infernal Shrines for game number two, and now we move on to game number three as the wind train taking us to Volskaya Foundry. Row 1 Esports electing to have, for the third time tonight, first pick, first ban. And uh, look at that. As we discussed while we were uh, off camera, a little bit of an adjustment here. Row 1 Esports I mean, does not want to see a third iteration of that Orphea. I mean, I'll give it the Alpha Rec. His Orphea is clean. He he knows what he's doing. He, he can dive in and dive out smoothly and his transitions are beautiful and you know there's only certain things you can do the counter that it's like having a you know illidan against you i mean you could just get a point and click stun in my opinion <laughs> meanwhile all the rest of the bands stay the same alarak uh, chromie and etc all taken off the board to join that orphea deathwing going to be left open possibly available here for the wind train a little uh, side research by my partner here uh, that's it. That's definitely a that's definitely a hero that Concept plays quite effectively. Yeah. Now, and if it's something Ming early here, I wouldn't be surprised Poe. if Roll One maybe takes the Deathwing just to you know, you know, make sure they don't get it. You know, I've seen that sometimes, but well, they're certainly we'll not go. going to prioritize it. They're gonna maybe save it for after that third ban if. Uh, Row 1 Esports doesn't want to take it off the board 
after the uh, the midway through this draft. But uh, Johanna going to be stolen away, so Chuck Rogers going to be playing something other than Blaze for us here. Show it begin. Anytime you're ready. Meanwhile, we get uh, Deckard for Wanabe. Uh, maybe not quite as broken as he was before this last uh, adjustment. No, 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 no. Still pretty strong. Yeah, okay. Ruby, Ruby nerf hasn't haven't uh, hasn't touched down yet. Okay. Um, in the next patch, when they rework Gazla and Diva, is when they're nerfing ETC's Encore and Deckard's Ruby. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, Roll One Esports remembers back to that first game and still doesn't want to see the white main come out. Uh, white main game very very strong in team fights. I mean, one ult for her gives her enough mana to just. Do really whatever she wants. <laughs> and all that damage just turns around and just feeds her. How are we gonna see the Deathwing here? That is my question. Concept, gonna save his pick for last. As we see Lunara and Stukov coming out. So, well, uh, I mean, the Wind Train gonna have... wait to see what role in esports finishes their draft wick here before they commit to the Deathwing. I mean, as good as a Deathwing you might be, you don't want to pick an early Deathwing and then, you know, see a Tychus Malthio, you know, right. draft against you. Because then you can be the best, you know, damn Deathwing in the world, but ain't going to do you any good if you're taking, you know, 4% of your health every four seconds. <laughs> Speaking of percentage damage, here comes Leo and Aperius. So is that enough to dissuade the wind train from Definitely, taking... Um, you know, this there's a really high div and it's definitely showing uh, the interest of off meta tanks right now. I mean Blaze has sort of been dabbled in as a tank here and there for the past few seasons, but nothing too big. Imperious, you know, I mean people have talked about it a bunch, but you know, this season they've seen it a couple times in the preseason, but now we're seeing it. I mean, this is an Imperious main tank in a live season, which is um it's definitely interesting in my opinion. He he's he's the same thing as a Blaze, he's all in or he's dead. You know, either you go in, you land a Q, you kill someone, or you don't. <laughs> Meanwhile, in comes Yorel. It's the final pickup for the wind train. So we're going to see Leo versus Yorel in the solo lane. A little bit of displacement possibility coming in from Yorel, but also just the ability to harass the back line while being very difficult to pin down and kill. Mm. All right. So I, I didn't I didn't force you to do this in the first couple of drafts, but uh, just based on the draft alone, who do you think won the draft here? Who do I think won draft here? Yeah. Um, who do you like train. based on the draft? I'm gonna have to give it the wind train here again. I think the the Lunara's poke damage against a Deckard is is something Deckard can't deal with. If Lunara <clears throat> gets at least one or two stacks on everyone on roll one side roll one's gonna be taking this constant you know tick 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 damage that deckard just can't keep up with deckard's really good for that single target burst or putting up rubies for your frontliners that are diving in and you know tagging in together and then if deckard can't heal it enough you know mephisto level 10 if he does decide to do it consume souls it's, i mean it's big it'll just blow up a whole team no matter where you are i prefer to see durance but you know and uh, just just to quickly address the chat yes this is Blank with me, a.k.a. Zigo. Thanks again for joining me tonight, dude. But let's get on in for game number three, our big finale here for the opening night of NGS. We've got on the left, once again, Roll One Esports, Big Beard, going to be on the Rainer. Wannabe going to be playing the Deckard Kane. Velvet on the Imperius. We're going to have Zad on the Leoric. And Poe going to be playing my personal favorite hero, Lee Ming. And uh, here on the right side is Wind Train again with Duck Rogers on the Johanna, Concept on the Arel, Delra, Delra, uh, Delzim on the Lunara, uh, Alpharac on the Mephisto, and uh, where's he? Mia on the Stukov. Only damage Batman. Between the, the Mephisto and the Lunara, tons of uh, AoE damage coming out here from the Wind Train to start it. But everybody walks away. Without there being the first blood claim so far. Never mind, there it is. Big Beard goes down. And that's going to be first blood going over to the wind train. I mean, like I, like I talked about a little bit in the moments we're loading in, I mean, 
Imperius main tank, I mean, like, you saw it, he dove in, he got a really good stun, but then, you know, Mephisto, Mephisto doesn't care if you don't, you know, you don't catch Mephisto, Mephisto would just be like, oh, okay, I'll just, you know, do whatever his electric circle's called and just blow up your backline, boom, done. Both one teams one starting out their camps to... nice and early here. One thing we will see is Concept will not be winning this lane like last game. Zad will have the advantage here. As so long as he lands his W's on a URL, URL will always be on the behind. But we do see the weird level one talent again. Level one on a Lyric. I don't I don't understand. I mean dying nearby minions, healing, it's just I don't know. In my opinion, it's uh <laughs> Not really that great because in the middle of a team fight, you know, there's not always minions around. I mean, maybe for like infernal shrines, you know, but that's like the same concept of you know, main tank Zul on infernal shrines. Well, Zad, it's official, you've tilted my solo laner. <laughs> <laughs> so, up comes Roll One Esports to the top lane, focusing on the clear. Uh, well, the wind train gonna cap this maybe a little bit early, he's gonna be pushing into the lane. You almost wonder if they maybe try to leverage that top push into maybe a support camp attempt or well, you know, where they might take they this. Well, seeing they do have a slight experience lead, I wouldn't be shocked by that. You know, seeing that you see roll one is immediately responding. They see camp coming out and they're going to go grab theirs. I think wind train should have realized that that, you know, that was going to happen. And yeah, they should have gone for that support. They're not. They're just going to keep pushing this top lane in. And we'll be able to push in a little bit here while the camp comes in on the other side. But uh, both teams There's gonna respond. Damage. Big damage. Look out! The silence comes oh, out. Oh, big beard barely making Woo. it out. That that, that, that skull missile up. was coming for him. Didn't quite find the mark though. Alpha rack and Alpha rack and Dozen, I and mean, their damage hits so big on AOE. What's a what's a Leorc to do to it? You know, I mean, he can only put down so many potions. Right. Yeah, another another nice advantage here for the wind train. They get on this point first, preventing Decker from being able to spread out those potions early. So it's gonna take a little bit of time for Roll One Esports to get really established on this point. Yeah, one thing Roll One does have that camp pushing the top, and it, that camp unanswered early game with a decent wave like it has can get dangerous. But two of them are already dead. There's only just one up there, so I don't see it being bad as a threat. It's more gonna Do stall the wave at this point. Coming out already. Wow, that's a pretty in early turret in my opinion. Usually you would hold turret till second. You can claim your second turret and then use them both at the same time and they really, you know, hold control. Both teams picking up their level sevens. Uh, the wind train clicking them in a little bit faster, but uh, we'll see multiple members very low here from Roll One Esports. They're gonna have to get some healing out. Deckard takes a little bit of time for him to heal the team back up. Meanwhile, Velvet the thing is, going in Roll One big. doesn't really have anymore as they had to use in top lane and there's the double kills the resets coming in for Lee Ming Velvet oh, no trying to stay alive gets into the bush and avoids oh. your well reset city here for rolling esports as they pick up the three for nothing and this should allow them to be able to secure this point that turnaround was absolutely beautiful I mean they didn't have taps but I mean, Deckard hitting level 7 is that damage reduction on cube, which, you know, really turns that fight. And then you get the resets, like you were saying, just, you know, they just keep, you know, going and going. And honestly, I mean, Johanna and Urella are really strong, but, you know, the later this game goes, the more percentile damage that the York and Imperius are just going to, you know, just absolutely destroy on this team. Oh, with that cheeky uh, Lee Ming damage over the wall to take out the uh, the well player after my own heart right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, a uh, classic move from Roll One Esports. They will go ahead and uh, go up to the top here and look to potentially get the well up in the top lane to give them an advantage on the next objective. Realistically, all they have to do is get that wall down since they do have the Ming. Ming can just go ahead and cheese this well too. Yep. They do give up a lot of damage though. 20 seconds still on this thing, and they are down into 13% health. They are very close to tens. I mean, if they play this right, they can turn around right out of this protector, take a tens fight, and just keep this advantage rolling in their favor. They do back up. They keep it alive, but uh, we'll run out of time here as they clear. They don't get the well. They only get uh, the 
the top turret and the top side wall. Nice defense here from the wind train. They do have a lot of counter siege damage, but they are able to defend pretty well against this objective. Level 10 is going to be hit first for roll one esports, and we're going to see angelic armaments along with the entomb, wave of force, lornado, and the hyperion. Meanwhile, on the other side, the wind train now clicking in their level 10s as we see leaping strike, blessed shield. Uh, uh, I can never remember the defender. Well, yeah, ardent defender. There we go. Massive shove. And uh, Mephisto sitting on his. I mean, you would think this would be Durance. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, both teams kind of shading around the top here. Maybe taking Don't a look honest, at the support uh, camp. Looking at level 10s, I mean, everyone has them locked in except Mephisto. Mephisto's holding his level 10. We do see the consumed souls come out. I mean, this is what I was talking about, you know, during the draft. We, you know, there's a big combo. Yeah, it comes out early, it gets a ton of damage, but Lunara gets poked down on the backside. Hyperion coming out, but Rainer falls as the damage comes in. Actually finished off there by Mia. Velvet stuck in deep, I and mean, this is what we're talking about. He has no Q, he has no way of getting out. He missed Q again. He's gonna get caught here. He's hit silenced, and he is all in. He is it's all or nothing. Yeah, meanwhile, on the other side, it's a Lee Ming comp. They are looking for the resets. And they are not able to find a kill there post 10 with all of that healing and uh, the, the the defense that uh, that they have, especially with that ardent defender. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know that the entomb is really good, but I think also the entomb is also really bad at the same time. That I mean, entomb with that close to towers is almost useless. You're not going to be able to do anything, and as you saw, you know. Everyone just sat behind the walls and just, you know. Yeah, very aggressive. Let walls, let walls take all the damage. Well, we do see the rotation coming in here from Roll One Esports. Leo going to be coming down on the backside. Velvet going to be here to be on point. And uh, we do see the jump in here. And they're able to knock them back, but in comes the Lornado. In comes the Entomb. Silence going to be put right on the point here, and that's going to be that's trouble for again, Zad. Has, still has Arden if really needed. Velvet gonna have to dive out. We do see a turret put down. We see the uh, the support camp also dropped for the wind train, but they do win the point. They get the XP. They get the kill on Leo. So now they're gonna have that extra turret rolling up into the top lane here for objective B. Now they're gonna be able to get their own turret and have two turrets in this next fight. Smart move, putting Mia up on the point. We're gonna have to maybe have that Sukov back off here if enough roll one members roll on up into this point. But uh, we do see level 13. Not quite here yet for roll one esports for the NGS veterans. See them clicking them in now. Maybe they're too much of that. Maybe they're getting a little slow. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> The shade, but uh, definitely, definitely, uh, it does make you. It does typically make you a little bit more patient, I find. Hmm, that's definitely you. Stab does come in along with that uh, big and tomb. I mean, yeah, one Lunar one... gonna jump out of it, but on the backside. No, here, there was big beard. Yep, Hyperion not gonna be able to save him in that scenario. Deals a little one bit of damage to the backside. Uh... One big thing that Roll One does have to go for them is that their late game is astronomically amazing. I mean, Imperious Leoric, you know, level 20, are super destructive, followed up by a, a Ming and a Jimmy damage. So I can I can definitely see that the patience you're talking about them if they play this out correctly and they they head into that late game, you know, they could potentially turn this and make this a really well fought game. Velvet going in, taking a ton of damage from the leaping oh strike. Barely saving him, man. Almost enough, but uh, does end up with the wind train picking up another kill on the Imperius. They're gonna put a couple members into their Triglav protector, and we'll see what they can get done with it. In my opinion, I think the best thing to do is yeah, they get that front, that whole front objectives down, and they just do it on every one. They get front wall and front wall well, uh, well. You know. At every fort, it gets them. It keeps their advantage that they have. Keeps it rolling. 
And we don't see them go for that mid well. You see them immediately just rotating for that bot well, which is where our next objective is going to be for people who don't know. Yeah, they go straight in Laser for the bot. The this is definitely direction. the priority. <laughs> if they can get the fort here as well, it does give them an even bigger advantage. Nowhere to run for World 1 East. Fort. goes straight for fort, not even for well. They yep. are going all in to get this fort down. They, they're gonna hit 16s. They can they could take this well and immediately turn and take a 16 fight right out of this. We see Alpharac leading it up. They're already getting extremely low. Poe is an old damage away, but Consume Soul is on cooldown. Big yeah. Beer is low. Velvet is low. Velvet falls once again in. As you said, he pointed it out. The Imperius, you know, you have, he has to commit. And when he commits, if the team can't go with him. It's, uh, it's just spells trouble I'm, for that. I'm line. just saying, any team that is used to playing a Blaze who's an all in tank knows how to counter it. You know, you know how to counter yourself. Right. You know your counters. Typically. Yeah, typically. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to assume. Not, not always, but you know, yeah, most yeah. of the time. <laughs> They're a little out here. Ooh, potentially. Are trolling? Maybe. Look at me on the backside. Oh my god, oh, I made it. Nora damage. <laughs> Almost made it. Uh, what a... I, I don't, interesting... Yeah, situation. I don't know. I don't know if he expected uh, the, the, the wind train to be there. Honestly, I mean, you gotta think about it. They had the lead, and all of them were missing off the map. No one was even soaking. I mean, what do you think they're gonna be doing? So you're saying that was the wind train scheduled stop? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Couldn't help myself. <laughs> uh, too many train puns. All right, so <laughs> we go on to level 16 for both of these squads. This is the uh, this is the part I personally hate about this map the most is uh, the long, long downtime between these objectives. I believe I was looking into it with uh, with Shu, one of our other teammates. I believe Voskaya has the longest distance between uh, objectives because it's when the objective Spear. dies is when the timer starts up. Leaping strike to get him out of trouble. Backside, we do see the totem put down here. Velvet in once again. Now getting silenced. Here oh. comes the consuming souls. The poison damage is going to be enough. Going to be both the front line down once again for the roll for roll one esports. I mean, level, train. 20, level 20 consumed souls is going to be absolutely destructive. I mean, the team mm -hmm. always has people super close, and it's just going to keep going. Going. Excuse me. Yeah, this is the reset comp for Roll on Esports, but post 20, with that upgrade, it will be a bit of a reset comp for the Wind Train. Exactly. Now it looks like uh, they're going to pull into mid. I mean, they have no reason to force this objective here. They're just going to go for full fort clear, keep that level advantage, keep the experience advantage. I mean, if they get this here, they, they're going to hit 20s in no time at all. Big, big damage on Deckard. Not getting low. Velvet just now back, so a little bit too late for them to be able to... Stagger. This is what they want. You know, Zad's down. Now Velvet just got back to keep the stagger rolling. Mm -hmm. One death into another, into another, into another. That's how this game's played. I think they're finally realizing that they don't need to take too many more fights. I think they should take this turret here. I think they will. Yeah, they will invade. Zad is almost up here. Roll one esports yeah, thinking it. about it's it. They're gonna think better of it. Zad gonna have to spawn yeah, with absolutely. care here. They do have just this tiny window before the wind train have level 20. If I'm the wind train, I'm just backing up here. All they need is a few more seconds to get 20, and the roll one can't fight them here, but they're gonna give them this fight. Nope, they're, nope, nope, nope there they go. They pulled the ripcord. <laughs> Good call. They're, they're backing off and they're waiting. They're playing this, is the, this is the new NGS team making the experienced call. This is the veteran call. But now are they gonna now be able to back out of here? Roll one forcing. Roll one invading. This is very smart for them. Tornado going to try to push people off the point, but it's going to be Imperius falling first. Multiple members low for the wind train, but Leo will fall, but somehow Lunara stays alive. And once again, the wind train 
being very stingy with their resets here, I feel for poor Poe. Now I'm just saying, I don't know if anyone noticed mid fight. Mid fight, Johanna picked in Indestructible, which is her level 20 death save. She did die and pop that shield and live through that fight. So if they had, if that fight had gone just a little bit sooner, Rowan would have gotten that Johanna pick, probably and potentially could have kept it rolling, gotten that Lunara pick. Yeah, and, get you know, for that one reset. Yeah. Yeah, all he needs is that one reset, and then Poe is just, you know, just doing his thing. It's just, it's just orbs constantly flowing in there. Exactly. It's orb, 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 orb. <laughs> I would know. I have a, a main player on my team. I don't know if you know him. You got Jason. Oh, I guess I shouldn't say it. Never mind. You have one Ming player, and his name is Jason. <laughs> no one else. No one else. <laughs> no one could possibly play Ming. Other Silent Shu can only play like one hero. I don't know if you guys have heard. All right, so um, this is going to be the objective going over once again to the wind train. Pick up their second protector. I think this one, they're looking for keeps. Or at least this bottom one. Yeah. Bottom keep will go down. Not quite as much counter siege on the other side here for Roll One Esports. Orb resets coming in, dealing a lot of damage to this protector. Not the, best, not the best team fighter, the protector. Still about a full level before Roll 1 Esports will have those 20s. As they roll right through the mid fort, no problem. They're looking to force, though. Looks like they're trying to find them out of this. Top lane pushing pretty heavily here for Roll 1. Actually, leave the protector in mid. I love it. Let it soak the wave. Yep. Let's <laughs> <laughs> put it in park, baby. I mean, honestly, you've got a better team fight out it outside of it. So they're looking to force here with twenty. Concept looking to try to find something. The wave of force knocks him back just a bit. Sad, gonna have to wraith walk away. Roll one, gonna wait for their 20s to come in. Another big camp invade. This is the Volskaya game. Once you get the lead, you can kind of roll around the map. Pick now, up I'm all the toys. Saying, like, I said, like I said earlier, roll one can turn this one around at level 20. I don't know. I mean, I think. I think Wind Train really should be pushing this advantage. They have the 20s. They have over, you know, almost two levels on them. They should just, you know, they should try to fight, fight, fight. Take camps, take, you know, take the fight. But also at the same time, because they have the advantage, maybe they do just play it safe. Get all the camps and then, you know, win next objective. And next objective will win them this game. I can see both sides of this. Personally, I think it would have been better if they just fought. Yeah, I mean, at this point, when you're, when you're taking... When you're taking the uh, all the item camps, it's, it's pretty much uh, one of the biggest advantages I think you can expect to get in this situation. Uh, aside from maybe trying to f uh, push into a structure to try to force that 20 fight. But now it's level 20s on both sides. Silence and Tomb comes into play here for Zad. And he's going to be a little bit out here in lane. Does Wraith walk back after taking about half his health. And poke damage here. Big, big poke from the wind train. And once again, we get this. We get this big downtime once again here. <laughs> Just seems to drag on forever. Yeah, there's really not much to commentate at this point. I mean, teams are just, you know, slowly looking at Siege, slowly soaking. They're just really waiting for this objective fight to come up. And you know, there's not much to... <laughs> like, oh my god, wow, look at all this. The camp's up for the wind train! No, I don't know. <laughs> we do have 30 seconds for, um... Roll 1's Fort uh, turret camp to come back up. This would give wind train five items. Four turrets, one heal. 
And I mean, five items on an objective is definitely a way to hold down. Oh, look out, Zad! Oh, look Zad at all that poison damage. Low. Alpharoc goes in! Low. Do we see the consumed souls to confirm the kill? No, no, we do not. No, I don't think they're gonna waste. Oh, there it is. Oh, we do the consumed souls. Oh, but it doesn't yeah, get a kill. No anymore. reset! But uh, there's the kills. Like, yeah. <laughs> a little delayed. Ah, uh, no, it's not GTA. It. It. Come on, Velvet. Velvet. Velvet thinks it's over. We'll see as they go in. They got. They got a decent amount of siege now. All right, it's over. It's over. Lunara dealing a ton of damage with that uh, that poison build, and that is going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. Game number three and the series goes over to the wind train. Securing themselves a lovely start to the season over the uh, veteran NGS squad of Roll One Esports. And that's how you want to start off a season, I think. That Get that win out nice and early. Mm, this, however, is not how I wanted to start my season, which is uh, two straight <laughs> games of zeros in the stats column here. <laughs> oh well. It's rough. Let's see if we can set up a uh, interview with our winners. Final thoughts for that game three, Blake? Um, I mean, like I said, you know, early on in draft, uh, Wind Train definitely had motivation after the Infer the Infernal Shrines. I really love their draft here. I mean. Personally, you know, they, they saw them fist and they saw Lunara, and they still locked in that Deckard really early. I mean, Deckard can be really strong, but they don't have that big of a front line with the Imperious Lyric. And there's a lot of poke damage. And, you know, just overall quick thought is what I said at the beginning of the game is it came down the draft. All right, well, we, it looks like we are going to have an interview with uh, Team Captain for the wind train. So uh, we're going to head over to NGS Lobby 1 if you'd like to join me. Oh, yes, yes. Of course. All right, so we have uh, with us Smith, a.k.a. Alpha Rack. Congratulations, Hello. man. How are you guys feeling? Game 1 win. Oh, we got multiple yeah. people. Oh. It's, an it's an invasion. <laughs> you know, the wind train sticks together. All right, all right, everybody. Uh, the whole train pulls into the station. I get it. <laughs> we're feeling good. We're feeling good. Our debut game. We're feeling on top. We're feeling good. All right. So normally I do this at the end, but I'm I'm too curious to wait. So I, I want you guys to tell me more about the wind train. This is not a team I've heard of before. Uh, do you guys have any uh, prior uh, prior experience? Are you, are you guys playing in Heroes Lounge? What's your guys' uh, tell us your life story? Uh, Dalzim, do you go ahead, want to take this one? Sure. Uh, so basically, the wind train got started as a group of people. We had a very fun weekend uh, in Storm League. Uh, we met on that weekend. We've been playing for a few months together. And uh, at some point, we decided that we'd be interested in training and signing up for a league. Uh, we missed the previous season in NGS because we were not quick enough. And uh, over time, the roster changed a bit. We've got two people who uh, change over time. And then part of us, like uh, part of the main roster, four people are new to playing competitive. And one of us has prior experience uh, in NGS. So yeah, that, that's Duck, how the win thing got Rogers, started. Rogers, as I recall. Yes. Yep. All yes, right. I've definitely seen that name around. <laughs> All right, so you guys come in this first week. Uh, what were your guys' expectations going into the season? Were you familiar with any of the other teams? Uh, looking forward to playing any teams in particular? Uh, um, Smith, you want to take this one? Yes, yes. Uh, we've got a couple of friends uh, that we know are playing in some of the other teams. Um, but uh, overall, we're, we're just excited to play in general. Uh, being our first event, we've been looking forward to this uh, ever since we grouped. Uh, as far as expectations went, we know we've got a strong team, but we know the competition is fierce. Uh, so we're just happy with the results. 
All right, well, uh, Blank, do you have any questions for our winners here tonight? Um, hmm, let's see. So what, what the bands, I mean, your bands were very consistent. Um, you know, Roll One had pretty consistent until that last game when they finally banned out that Orphea, which I totally respect. Alpharac, you definitely played that very cleanly. But your bands were very consistent the whole time. Is there like a thought to why? Did you scout them a little bit? Or were they just things you just didn't want to see? Uh, that's that's all because of me. I ban the same two characters every game. They're selfish bans. I don't like ETC. <laughs> and Chromie's good. That's purely the reason. Okay. No, good, yep. I, I, I totally expect, I respect that. I mean, Roll1, uh, obviously, you know, as a team, I mean, they definitely scouted you i think a little bit because i mean the alaric and deathwing I, I did my own scouting mid game we're very targeted bands i mean alfrek your alaric seems like it's very clean and the concept is a decent deathwing player um him or herself and oh you know, he's not just decent he tops the damage chart he's just a monstrosity <laughs> um so i mean it was definitely Wait, deathwing should be <laughs> It was uh, it, it was definitely really interesting to see the bands were very consistent until you know that last game, which then it was that respect ban on that uh, on that Orphea. I think other than that, uh, I don't have, they have any questions. All right, so you guys are in game one on Towers of Doom. You guys are rolling back the clock <laughs> in terms of the uh, of, of the shots as you guys come back from a huge deficit. You go into a big team fight at the end and it doesn't quite go your way. Roll One Esports pulls it out of the fire. Tell me about your guys' reaction to that. What allowed you guys to come back and do the reverse sweep on them? Well, that was uh, that was my fault on the calls there. Um, definitely, I definitely botched that one. Uh, but the team stayed strong mentally. We had been preparing for this, you know, to, to not tilt, uh, nothing of the nature. Uh, we just stayed strong and we said that was a good game. Everyone played well and we knew we had a shot for the last two. Yeah, then you guys came out very very strong performances in both of those games uh two and three and uh congratulations on the win before we let you guys go we want to roll out the red carpet for you and let you do some shout outs oh awesome shout, -out? shout outs yeah yes, we'd yeah. like to give a shout out to moose cannon uh who's, moose. who's been unable to play with us uh tonight uh he was actually uh busy having a newborn child and uh good luck to him I'd also like to shout out my mother. <laughs> Sorry, my, my mother. Will, my mother will be watching this later. I'd like to shout her out. <laughs> nice. Hey, mom. Always got to shout out the mothers. <laughs> that's, that's good. Without them, we wouldn't be here. All right. Any anything else for you guys? I, I think that's it. I think we're just we're gonna rewatch the uh, the stream about three times over and head to bed. <laughs> All right. Thank well, you so much. yeah. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank thank you for the uh, excellent games. A very evenly matched uh, matchup here to start off the season. And uh, congrats on the win. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Casting us. Yeah, Have absolutely. a good night. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. Bye. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us tonight. But before. We end the stream. I do want to do some shout outs myself. First of all, thank you very much for joining me, Blank. Uh, where can people find you? What do you got going on? Um, Your life story. Uh, Wait one second. I'm trying to find it. I have a Twitter now. I just started a Twitter. I it's plan on it's actually, it's on screen. We, we got, okay, we got cool. you covered. I, uh, follow me on Twitter, or if you put a hashtag uh, between my uh my at and then like the numbers blank the numbers that's my discord you can add me in there um i plan on getting into streaming soon um maybe doing a little casting yeah. yourself yeah doing, doing a little you know, doing a little cast myself <laughs> um also you know you can find me in regen divine Div D west the, the coolest kids around we're gonna fucking kick ass this season <laughs> uh catch our game one on murder stream wednesday at uh, 8 p.m. PST. You stole the you stole the shout out right from me there. I love it. You're way ahead of me. I also, I come, catch up, come catch me and the boys. Bankai, Silent Shoe, Jason, Geek. We're all gonna be crushing it out there. All right. Well, I also want to shout out. Uh, speaking of murder, I want to shout out the Regen Network. You guys can find 
a little panel down below to see all the different regen network members. So give give our fellow regen boys a follow. And I also want to shout out the uh, NGS Patreon. So we got a little uh, thing to show for you here. Head on over to the NGS Patreon to check out all the rewards they got going on. I know I got to sign up sometime this season because I want one of those awesome player cards for sure. Uh, every season I like to try and get one of those if I can. But also, I want you guys to uh, don't forget to follow here. I'm getting really close to 500 followers. So hit that follow button up above. Come back for more excellent NGS action this season as we head on into season 10. And uh, thanks, everybody, for showing up. Thank you for all the follows and that big host from Crushinator and uh, the bits from Weenus, as always. And uh, that's going to be it for us tonight, guys, for the Nexus Gaming Series. I am Jason. This guy over here has been Blank, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.